friends, it's Miss Martin. In class, we talked about the boy who cried wolf, and that was a fable. And remember, fables are stories that teach morals or lessons, and every story has a moral or a lesson that it is trying to teach us. So, along with the boy who cried wolf, that is an original story that has led to other authors changing it a little bit and recreating it and kind of telling the same story in a different way. So today's story is Betsy who cried wolf. This one is by Gail Carson Levine and illustrated by Scott Nash. On her eighth birthday, Betsy took the shepherd's oath. Remember, a shepherd is a special kind of farmer that takes care of sheep. She was going to be the best shepherd in the Brave Valley history, and any wolf who tried to eat her sheep had better watch out. Make us proud, Betsy! Her community is wishing her good luck. That night, while Betsy slept in her bedroom above her mom's bakery, Zimmo howled on Rosenrise Mountain. Ooh! He was hungry. Boo! Hoo! Hoo! He was lonely. The sheep were always guarded and he was the last wolf on the mountain. He needed a plan. He thought, mmm, hmm. Mmm, he howled. Aye, yee, yee. He had it, a plan to trick the shepherd and the farmers. It wouldn't make him less lonely, but he'd get to eat the sheep. He howled merrily. Trelly, trelu. Hoo hoo. He's a very noisy wolf. Here's Betsy. Betsy's just trying to get some sleep, guys. Betsy scanned to the left. Whoops. Miss Martin skipped a page. Sorry, guys. Early the next morning, Betsy packed her lunch pail with two helpings of mom's pies. Then she led the sheep up Rosenrise. When they got there, she scanned the slope to her left. No wolves. She scanned to her right. No wolves. But a ewe was trying to jump in the soaking wet's river. Betsy drove her back and then scanned straight ahead. No wolves. All right. Hidden in a thicket halfway up the mountain, Zimmo watched Betsy. She looked tough, but he'd fool her Anyway, Betsy's saying, down here, right now, trying to get the sheep to be safe. But up here, who do we see? <gasps> Zimmo. Mm. Zimmo, the wolf. The sheep are talking to Betsy. This one is saying, I don't want to go that way. I hate going uphill. Bah! must be hard being a shepherd when your sheep complain all the time. Betsy scanned to the left again. Zimmo stepped out of the thicket. Was it a wolf? Betsy reviewed her wolf checklist. Long snout, check. Bushy tail, check. Mm. And here she is reviewing her list. Hungry eyes, check. Sharp teeth, check. Oh, Miss Shepherdess, we have company. It's a dog. Too skinny to be a wolf. Bah! This one says, he's wearing a woolen muffler.
It was a wolf. Betsy blew her wolf whistle and cried, Wolf! Exactly as she'd been taught in shepherd school. Every farmer and Bray pounded up to the pasture. Zimo slipped into his thicket and watched. Those farmers could scare an ordinary wolf, but not Zimo, not a hungry wolf with a plan. They're coming to help Betsy. Betsy's calling for help. Her community is coming to help her. Where's the wolf? Farmer Wolsey shouted. Betsy pointed, there! But the wolf had vanished. Safe in his hiding place, Zimmo chuckled and his stomach rumbled. Farmer Wolsey scowled. Are we going to lose the whole flock again, Betsy? Long ago, Bray Valley had lost its sheep because of a mischievous shepherd. Who do you think that was? Hmm. Maybe the boy who cried wolf. Should we send you back to shepherd's school, he thundered. No, sir. There was a wolf. Farmer Wolsey just shook his head and started back to his fields. All the farmers shook their heads and followed him. None of them believed Betsy. And the sheep? Bah! Shepherdess! Bah! Bah! Ha 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 ha! Here they are talking to Betsy. They didn't believe Betsy. This is a different problem, huh? Zimmo almost felt sorry for Betsy. It wasn't her fault she was up against a hungry, lonely wolf with a plan. Betsy went back to work. Scan right, no wolf. Scan left, no wolf. Scan straight ahead, no wolves. All right. Time for lunch. Betsy reached into her lunch pail. She She'd protect the sheep no matter what. She'd show those farmers. Zimmo waited. Let her eat in peace, he thought. He scratched a flea and then ate it. Some lunch for a wolf. Betsy finished her rhubarb pie. Scan right. That wolf again. guys. Zimmo felt bad about tricking Betsy, so he howled, a wee! She had him now. She blew her whistle. She hollered, wolf, wolf! When she turned to look for the farmer, Zimmo tiptoed away, feeling like a skunk. But he had to follow the plan. A wolf had to eat. Only half as many farmers came this time. No one even saw a hair of a wolf. Farmer Woolsey took away Betsy's whistle and sent her back to shepherd school. We're disappointed in you, Betsy. You've let us down. How do you think she felt being sent back to shepherd school? She was trying her best to do a good job, right? Hmm. Hmm. The next morning, Farmer Woolsey let Betsy have the flock again, but he said it was her last chance. When she reached the pasture, she scanned right. No wolves. She scanned the left. That wolf again. But this time he was, he's giving the flock back to Betsy. He says, this is your last chance. Bah, let's go, I'm starving. But then they see the wolf again. What's gonna happen? Bearing his fangs. Galloping down the mountain toward the sheep. Betsy blew her whistle. She cried, wolf, wolf, wolf. She turned down to the slope. Nobody was coming. She had to stop the wolf herself. 
Betsy spun around to watch him, her foot knocked into her lunch pail, and her pie helpings tumbled out. Here he comes, guys. He's snarling, growling, rowling. Betsy knocks her lunch pail over. What's gonna happen? How is she gonna stop him herself? Zimmo stopped short and sniffed. Yum. The sheep smelled just like wool, but those pies smelled delicious. He took a step toward them. My, he was skinny, Betsy thought. Poor wolf. He was starving. Still, she had a job to do. She picked up her tin plate of shepherd's pie to hurl at him. Zimmo sat on his hunches and howled. A tear trickled down his cheek. Oh, so here he is, food, there's his tear, she's about to throw a what at him, the sheep is saying he has a lovely voice, watch out doggy, <laughs> this little one doesn't quite understand what's happening, does he, what do you think is going to happen, Betsy lowered her arm, so far, he hadn't hurt the sheep. If he wanted her lunch, he could have it. She put the plate down and she stepped back. Help yourself. Yum! Zimmo rushed at two big helpings of pie. Betsy watched. For a second, she thought about petting him. But a shepherd couldn't pet a wolf. Zimmo wolfed down Betsy's lunch and licked the plate clean. He felt much better now, so he wagged his tail and trotted away. The sheep are saying, bah, and Betsy's putting down her lunch and he's eating her pie. Chomp. Halfway up Rosenrise, Zimmo hid behind a tree and watched Betsy. And you had gotten stuck in a bramble bush and she was pulling the brambles out one by one. What a fine shepherd she was. We live in Louisiana, guys. Have you ever been out in the grass and you've gotten those things stuck to your clothes? Kind of the same thing. But uh-oh, those lambs over there were too close to the cliff. Look, shepherd, look. But she was too busy. And the lambs, uh-oh. The sheep is saying, oh no, too close to the cliff. This one says, is he on the fleece? Because she's picking his brambles out. Oh no, so much going on. It's very hard to be a shepherd. Zimmo had to save them. The ones that were too close to the cliff. He bounded down the mountain, growling and snarling. Betsy whirled around. That wolf charging at the sheep. And she didn't have any more lunch to give him. She picked up a stone, but she didn't throw it because he was ch chasing the lambs back to the flock. He was hurting them. And he was great at it, too. Huh. Wait. I thought he was scary. He's bringing the sheep back up the cliff. It's kind of nice. For the rest of the day, Zimmo helped Betsy with the herding when the sheep didn't need them. Betsy petted Zimmo and he taught her how to howl. And then they sang together. Tra la la, tra la lee, ha ha, halloo. That night, Betsy took Zimmo home to eat chicken pot pie and sleep in her room over her mom's bakery. In the morning, Farmer Woolsey and the other farmers apologized to Betsy. Next, Zimmo howled the shepherd's oath. Kee e e she e e e se e e e. From then on, Betsy and Zimmo herded together and ate mom's pies together. 
the two shepherds of Bray. You know, there's a moral in this somewhere, says a sheep. Someone should write a book about these two. People who cry wolf may be deceived and not deceivers. Share your lunch and you'll probably have wool for a nice warm sweater. Wool on the sheep is worth more than wool in the wolf. Sometimes a shepherd's best friend is a wolf. The pie is mightier than the fang. A story with too many morals is like a book that won't end. the end. I think Betsy Who Cried Wolf is a fun one, guys. What do you think? Let's talk about it at recess. Bye!